The human respiratory system is a system of our body that is involved in the process of respiration, in the process of breathing. It exchanges oxygen for carbon dioxide. Now, the primary organ of the respiratory system are the lungs, and each person contains two different lungs. We have a right lung and we have a left lung. Now, these lungs are found in the chest portion of our body, and that is called the thorax. So within our thoracic cavity, we have our two lungs. So if this is the right side of the body and this is the left side of the body, then this is the left lung and this is our right lung. Now, because of the position of the heart, it turns out that our left lung is slightly smaller than our right lung, and that's because our heart, which is found within this particular portion of the body, is actually accommodated inside the left lung. So the left lung has to use some of its space to basically accommodate our heart, and that's exactly why our left lung is slightly smaller by volume and by mass than our right lung. And that's exactly why the left lung only consists of two lobes while our right lung consists of three different lobes. So let's begin with the left lung. We have this upper lobe also known as our superior lobe and we have the lower lobe of the left lung also known as our inferior lobe. And the line, the fissure that separates these two lobes on the left lung is known known as the left oblique fissure. Oblique simply means it's at an angle, it's slanted. Now, on the other hand, the right lung, which is slightly larger, consists of three different lobes. We have an upper or a superior lobe, and then we have a middle lobe, and the line separating these two lobes is straight or relatively straight, and that's exactly why we call it the horizontal fissure. Now, we also have a lower lobe, also known as our inferior lobe, and this is separated by a line called the right oblique fissure because it's also slanted just like this one so we have the upper the middle and the lower lobe now superior simply means it's found above and inferior means it's found below and that's exactly why these two are referred to as the superior and these two lobes are referred to as our inferior lobes so we see that our two lungs are found within our thorax, within our thoracic cavity, and below our lungs, as we'll see in just a moment, there's a special type of skeletal muscle known as our diaphragm, and the diaphragm separates our lungs from the stomach and the small intestine, and it also functions in the process of respiration. Now, let's actually discuss the way that our air moves into our lungs via this passageway system that we have that connects between our nose and our lungs. So essentially, when we breathe in, we can either breathe in through our mouth or we normally breathe in through our nose. Now, when we breathe in through our nose, the air, and this includes things like nitrogen and oxygen, that moves in to our nasal cavity. The nasal cavity are the canals found within our nose. Now, the lining of the nasal cavity consists of a special type of slimy and sticky membrane known as the mucous membrane. And the mucous mem um, a membrane is secreted and created by specialized cells known as goblet cells. Now, as the air travels through our nasal cavity, the pollutants and bacterial cells and other harmful substances essentially get stuck within this mucous membrane. Membrane. So we see that the nasal cavity, because it contains these tiny extensions known as cilia, as well as a mucous membrane that helps trap this harmful substance, the nasal cavity actually functions in the process of filtering. It helps our immunity system. It helps uh, protect our lungs from different types of harmful agents. 
Now, once our air passes through the nasal cavity, it enters a region, a passageway known as our pharynx. And the pharynx is this connection between our esophagus and our larynx. Now, the larynx is essentially that section that connects to our passageway, the windpipe we call our trachea. And the larynx also contains our voice box that creates our voice. Now, in order to prevent food from actually entering our trachea, the opening of our larynx actually contains a cartilage flap we call our epiglottis. So the epiglottis is open when air passes in, but it closes when we swallow food into our esophagus, into our uh, pharynx. So air uh, enters the body via the nose in the nasal cavity, a layer of mucous membrane acts as a filter and traps pollutants and other harmful substances that are found within the air that can ultimately end up in our lungs. Next, air moves into our pharynx. This is the tunnel that contains our intersection between the esophagus, the pipe that allows our food to move into our stomach, and our larynx, the connection between our pharynx and our trachea. Now, the opening of the larynx has a special flap of cartilage we call our epiglottis, and this allows the movement of air, but does not allow the movement of food into our air passageway we call the trachea. Now, the trachea is also known as our windpipe, and the trachea contains these cartilage rings that essentially allow the trachea to remain open and not to constrict. Now, the trachea eventually moves all the way down to this intersection and intersects and basically bifurcates. It forms these two bronchi. We have the right bronchus and our left bronchus, and each one of these bronchi essentially terminate within each one of our two lungs. Now, each of these bronchi subdivides into smaller structures called bronchioles. And these bronchioles eventually terminate in a specialized sac structure known as our alveoli. So if we zoom in on the smallest bronchiole that terminates inside the lungs, we basically get the following diagram. So the, uh, this is a sac-like structure that contains these tiny sacs known as uh, uh, alveoli. And these alveoli are specialized structures where gas exchange actually actually takes place. So the blood is oxygenated and it basically deposits our waste product, the carbon dioxide, back into the bronchioles and that eventually travels out of our system and to the outside environment. And we'll discuss the structure and the function of the alveolus in much more detail in the next several lectures. So as I mentioned earlier, our lungs are based inside the thoracic cavity. So thorax is simply the term that refers to our chest portion of the body. Now at the bottom of the lungs, we have this sheet of skeletal muscle we call our diaphragm. And the diaphragm not only separates the lungs from the stomach and our small intestine, the large intestine, but it also actually moves up and down and that ultimately allows the process of breathing to actually take place. Now, because the diaphragm is a skeletal muscle, that means we have voluntary control of our diaphragm. It is controlled by the somatic nervous system. Now, our lungs are not actually by themselves. They are encased in this membrane we call the serous membrane. And we call it a serous membrane because, as we'll see in just a moment, it actually contains a fluid. Now, this serous membrane consists of two individual membranes. We have an outer membrane and we have an inner membrane. So, this is a two-layer protective barrier that encloses our lungs. So to see what we mean, let's take a look at the following simplified diagram of the lungs and our membrane. Now, this entire membrane that encloses our lungs is known as our pleura. 
So we have an outer membrane of the pleura known as the parietal pleura. And we have the inner membrane of our pleura known as the visceral pleura. So the parietal pleura actually connects our lungs to outside uh, organs of our body, for example, our rib cage, and our visceral pleura actually connects to our two lungs. Now, in between the two pleura, we actually have a space. And this space, this cavity, is known as the intrapleural space or the pleural cavity. And this cavity contains a special liquid, a special fluid known as the pleural fluid. And what this pleural fluid actually does is it not only absorbs some of the shock that the lungs might experience as a result of some type of physical damage, so it doesn't only protect our lungs, but more importantly, it actually decreases the amount of friction that the lungs experience every time they actually contract, they expand and contract. So inside this space separating our parietal and the visceral pleura, we have this parietal fluid that not only absorbs the shock and protects our lungs, but it also decreases the amount of friction that the lungs feel every time they contract and expand. And below our lungs, we have this skeletal sheet of muscle known as our diaphragm. And as we'll see in the next several lectures, the diaphragm is a very important or uh, a very important structure because it allows the lungs to basically uh, carry out the process of respiration, carry out the process of breathing.